Hello friends, today I'm making a sword. So I'm a huge nerd and I recently started doing fencing. It's a great exercise, a really fun social thing and well most importantly you get to swing around a sword. And uh, in between our sessions I've been practicing you know the footwork and the swings and uh, I realized it really helps to have a, a good approximation of the sword in the hands to give the correct weight and balance to the movements. And also, I just want a cool wooden sword. So <laughs> today, um, let's make a big, nice long sword. Right, so my blade has been planed flat on all four sides. The edges are square to the faces. The faces are parallel and uh, very close to straight. I've made this uh, quick center finder from just a couple of dowels, a pencil and a scrap, and I'm going to use it to get a center line. This type of center finder is very convenient on a tapering piece because you just keep both dowels in contact with edges and your line stays centered. Can't do that with a marking gauge because the offset has to continuously become smaller as it approaches the tip. But now that I have my center line I can use that to square up the ends and I can also use it to create two parallel spots on the part that will become the handle. So I'm going to measure up to the base of the blade. So that will be the cross guard, the handle and the pommel. And from there I can strike a line that's square across. That is a little bit out of square in relation to the edges, but it is square to the center line, which is what I want. And I have 48 millimeters there. So I'm going to mark 24 to either side down here. And so if I plane this away, that should leave me with two parallel edges that are in line with the center of the blade. Now I am going to establish the thickness of the section that goes through the cross guard and the handle and into the pommel. On a real sword this is called the tang and it's a very thin piece of steel. You can get away with that because steel is so much stronger. I'm going to leave it to the full width of the blade, well almost the full width, and trim it to size when I shape the handle and uh, well I'm basically going to treat it exactly like a tenon in a furniture project. So I will set up my mortise gauge to the thickness of an appropriate chisel so that I'm able to use this chisel to chop the mortise through the cross guard later. With a tang or tenon shaped, I can now move on to create what's called the distal taper. The blade is already tapered in its width, but a sword also needs a taper in thickness. So it's fattest at the base here and gets thinner and thinner towards the point. This serves a few purposes. It decreases the weight of the tip, moving the center of gravity closer towards your hands, making it uh, more maneuverable. And uh, it also makes the blade more flexible. Right now, the weakest point of this is right here. So uh, if I were to do a thrust against some sort of training target and uh, because I'm not good at this yet, maybe overestimate, that could be sad times. 
So by thinning out the blade, it makes it more likely to bend instead of snap at that weak point. I wanted to make the tenon first because I've learned these skills in a furniture making context. So I really only know how to make a tenon from a square piece of wood. It would have been very difficult to form this tenon out of an already tapered blank. I really like how the blade feels now. It's much more maneuverable and uh, has, I think, enough flex in it. I still need to create the bevels, but before that I want to get started on the handle parts, the cross guard, the pommel, uh, to make sure the balance is roughly where it needs to be. And for that I have this piece of what I think is Ipe. It's the stuff I used for the dovetail saw handle and uh, oak is often said to be a uh, heavy wood. Compared to this stuff oak feels like pine. This is like a brick. It's monstrously heavy wood and I'm hoping it will pull the balance point further back into the hands and make the sword closer to the real thing. The cross guard will be made from two parts glued together to get the thickness. Not that it's going to be very thick, but I need to have a large blank that I can carve out the shape that I want. I wonder if I cut it from that side of the board, I then end up with more than enough material for the pommel in the center there. So that's great. Let's just check that that looks proportional. Could be a bit longer. Let's make it 300. It's funny, I remember when I was a kid and we were at some sort of renaissance fair, I guess uh, you would call it. And uh, I really wanted a wooden sword and they had some for sale, but I didn't like them because I thought they had two, two long cross guards. I was not used to seeing actual historical swords, I guess. All I had seen was in uh, fictional depictions that made the cross guards too small. So I, I decided not to get a sword. And here I am making my own with an absolutely massive cross guard and I think it looks awesome. So I'm happy I have matured in some respects at least. All right, so I got the mortise done and I'm now going to draw the shape that I'm going to cut out of this chunk. Doing that on a piece of paper so I can get a template and uh, make sure I have the same shape on all four sides. So that's the approximate width of the blade and uh, that will be the center. I have a total of 30 millimeters of thickness available. So I will center that measurement on the center line. And then just connect that with a nice curve like that. And there is my four-way symmetrical guard.
I think I'm going to call this cross guard done. Pretty happy with the shape. Proportionally it looks rather thick, but it's gonna have to be thicker than a steel cross guard would be. So um, yeah, I'll call it done here, but I'm not going to glue it on just yet. With this piece shaped, I can get an idea of where the point of balance is. Seems to be right there, which is honestly not bad. 18 or 19 centimeters, seven, seven to a half inches in front of the guard. And uh, more handle components are of course going to pull that center of gravity even closer, which means I don't have a lot of material to remove to create the bevels. So I need to be quite careful when making the bevels and uh, leave as much material as possible while still, uh, you know, making it read as bevels. And that's it for the blade for now. So now it's time to glue the cross guard in place. This is not an incredibly accurate way to check for square, but um, I think it looks good as far as I can tell. It makes me really anxious to just leave this without clamps, but uh, there's no reason it would be moving around. So um, I'm just going to set it aside. And while that's drying, I will get to work on the pommel. The pommel is like the, the knob at the end of the handle that provides some counterweight and also prevents your hands from slipping off. I will turn it on my new foot powered lathe, but before doing that, I need to prepare it a little bit. I need a hole through the center, that's how I will mount it on the lathe. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Alright, that's the pommel turned. This is my first uh, wood turning other than just a test piece I did when the lathe was up and running and uh, I mean I was able to get to the shape that I wanted so I'm happy with that. I tore out a big chunk there in the roughing stage and uh, I also gouged out the surface when I was trying to smooth it and I wasn't able to get down that deep. Honestly, I can live with that and uh, let's move on to the handle. So this is the piece that I intended for the handle after shaping the cross guard and this I am a little bit tired of this uh, IPA. So I've decided to go with a nice soft oak instead. Funny that how uh, new experiences can completely shift your uh, your view on things.
So uh, I just cut off a big part of the tang. What's the point of that? Well, I was planning to let the tang pass all the way through the pommel, just like on the real thing. But I couldn't really figure out a good way to fasten the pommel that way. It's very tempting to make it a wedged tenon. It would be a very strong joint if the grain on the pommel was running that way. But it's running this way, so wedging the tenon would just shatter the pommel. What I have decided to do is instead use uh, a bit of threaded rod and a nut on the end. It's going to be concealed inside the pommel, so I think it's going to look quite nice. But that of course requires that I uh, cut away enough wood so that the pommel can sit flat on top of air. So now I am marking where I need to drill and I am so, so terrible at drilling good 90 degree holes. So it's making me rather nervous, but I'm going to do my best. So with that hole drilled and tapped, I will later be able to epoxy in a length of threaded rod and use this little nut to secure the pommel. This nut actually came from a hand plane, one of those that I disassembled to make my router plane. So it's nice to be able to use that leftover part on a sword of all things. Right, so before I attach that, I need to shape the handle. I realized this nice hammer actually has an extremely good handle shape for a long sword when it's upside down. So this being the grip for the dominant hand, this being the grip for the off hand. Yeah, it, it actually works really, really well. So I'm going to use that as a basis with a little bit of modification and here where it starts to taper, I want a small ridge like that. So I'm pretty happy with that shape. Now for the other dimension, it's important that a sword handle is thinner than it's wide because it lets you know where the edge is pointing just by how it feels in the hands. Now I have the pommel in place, just temporarily. The nut will be recessed into the pommel shortly, so that will look a lot cleaner. But right now I want to carve the transition from this round into the octagon of the handle. While that epoxy is setting up, I'm going to apply a little bit of color to the handle. And finally, I will glue the pommel in place using polyurethane glue because it is supposedly the best for end grain. I usually wear gloves when using this stuff. I just couldn't find them right now, so I'll be careful not to get any on my skin. I want to put some decoration on this flat spot of the Ricasso. And uh, the design I've decided to go with is a classic sort of scroll pattern or acanthus leaf, often used in furniture and uh, as decorations and a lot of things. I'm gonna have to pull up some reference to do the details of this. This isn't the most beautiful piece of scroll work ever created, but uh, I think it gets the point across. Let's cut that out.
And while I'm gluing, I might as well put on this uh, blunt tip protection slash counterweight. Alright, there we have the carving at a stage where I'm decently happy with it. I mean, if you look close, it's not particularly clean, but from just a little bit away, I think it looks pretty good. So it's time to put some oil on this. Detailed carvings tend to absorb a lot of oil, so I'm hitting that first. So I will be able to put a second coat on as soon as possible. You can see how a little bit of that stain is coming off. So I will make sure to fold that into the rag so I'm not smearing the black over other parts of the sword. And there we go. I'm pretty happy with this. It was a really fun build and it's a lot of fun to swing around as well. Very difficult to fit the whole thing in the shot, but I think you know what it looks like by now. It doesn't have a fuller, that is, the groove that often runs along the center of the blade. Not all historical swords had fullers. They serve a purpose, but they're not necessary. And uh, I quite like the look of a blade without one, actually. This weight at the end is a lot bigger than I had hoped I could make it. I needed to make it this fat just to balance the hilt. The balance point is sort of there-ish, which is probably still a bit too close to the handle. It should be a little bit further out to get more, to get a better swing, I think. Maybe there are actually advantages to having it this close that I'm just not aware of yet. But I do wish I had made the blade a little bit thicker, maybe with a less extreme distal taper to preserve more weight at the end and bring the balance a little bit further out. That would make it match the training swords at the club a little bit closer. But this is going to be just fine for a while until I feel like, you know, my techniques are good enough that uh, a better sword would make a difference at this stage. I really just want something to swing around and have fun with, which this absolutely qualifies for. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I greatly appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you soon with probably a more furniture-ish build. Cheers.